Welcome back, everyone. Recently, I posted a video called Why People Can't Stop Blaspheming Muhammad. This video draws attention to the fact that very harsh penalties are commonly imposed on people who criticize Muhammad, in spite of the fact that the best criticisms of the Prophet of Islam are in the Muslim sources themselves. In the comments section on that video, there was some confusion. To summarize, numerous people argued that Muslim application of blasphemy laws apparently elevates Muhammad to the level of Allah. To the people posting these comments, this association seems strangely like shirk, something that Muslims are supposed to avoid at all costs. However, these comments fail to recognize the readily apparent differences between Allah and Muhammad that can easily be seen in Muslim understanding and practice. To help understand these distinctions and appreciate them, I'll give some differences between Muhammad and Allah to prevent further misunderstanding. Let's start with the issue related to the previous video, namely penalties for insulting Muhammad. We all know what the penalty for apostasy is, and Sharia law tells us that reviling Allah or his messenger is an act of apostasy. While Allah and Muhammad may appear to be grouped together rather closely in this instance, Notice that Muhammad has an honorific expression after his name, while Allah has no such thing. This is very frequent in all kinds of Muslim sources and in typical Muslim dialogue. The apparent higher honor associated with the mention of Muhammad is therefore one way you can typically tell a difference between Allah and Muhammad. Next, numerous Muslim websites list and describe the 99 names of Muhammad. However, carefully note the difference. Allah has 99 names. Get that right. Allah has 99 names, but Muhammad has 99 names. Wait, I said that backwards. Muhammad has 99 names, but Allah has 99 names. Next, according to Surah 434, there is an escalation to domestic violence. You don't start out beating your wife. That's crazy. You work up to it, like warming up for a boxing match. However, Muhammad lashed out at Aisha after she followed him out of the house one night. He did not punish his child bride in the way that Allah commanded by working up to physical abuse. Muhammad went right to the pain. Thus, Muhammad and Allah differ on their philosophy of domestic violence. But in case you're thinking that Muhammad can consistently be distinguished from Allah because Allah takes the moral high ground, Surah 65.4 has been interpreted by dozens of authoritative Muslim commentators as allowing consummating marriages with prepubescent girls. I've shown you numerous authoritative Muslim scholars who have argued this, but now I'll show you someone else. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, وَاللَّهِ لَمْ يَحِدْنِ وَاللَّهِ لَمْ يَحِدْنِ And the ones who had never been pubescent before. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Note that I don't care what Muhammad Hijab's opinion is, but there are Muslims so confused that they appear to group him and other popular Muslim apologists into the category of prominent Muslim scholars. So here you go again from a prominent Muslim scholar. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, وَاللَّهِ لَمْ يَحِدْنِ وَاللَّهِ لَمْ يَحِدْنِ And the ones who had never been pubescent before. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Therefore, in a quantum moral leap from the Quran, which sanctions prepubescent intercourse without specifying a lower age limit, Muhammad took the moral high road in this case, waiting all the way until Aisha was nine years old to steal her innocence. We come now to the Jews. Allah claimed that the Jews were turned into apes and pigs. However, Muhammad further argued that they had also been changed into lizards and rats as well. Pigs and apes, or rats and lizards, or pigs, apes, rats, and lizards. Who knows? While Muhammad and Allah agree on their hatred of the Jews, they appear to disagree, at least in part, on Allah's judgment of them. Next, it's not difficult to find sources where Muslims are commanded to pray to Muhammad, but they pray to Allah as well. However, 
This is a clear difference between Allah and Muhammad. Notice that Allah prays for Muhammad. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. And that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. For the Prophet. For the Prophet. For, not to the Prophet. So while Muslims pray to and talk to their dead Prophet, it's Allah who prays for Muhammad. So let's review these important differences. Muhammad more frequently gets honorific slogans after his name. Allah has 99 names, while Muhammad has 99 names. Allah escalates to domestic violence, but Muhammad beat him to the punch. The Quran has no lower age limit for young girls, but Muhammad waited until nine years old. Allah said the Jews were turned into apes and pigs, but Muhammad argued for much more. And finally, Allah prays for Muhammad. So for those of you who were for some odd reason thinking that Muslims associate Muhammad with Allah, therefore making Muhammad into their god, I hope this clears things up for you. I'm sure now you can see at least some of the differences between the Prophet of Islam and Muhammad. I mean between the God of Islam and Allah. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.